Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Do you hear that? Is it gone? Today I am very excited sharing my overclocking test results with you about the latest T-Rex miner. But before I get to that, I could not say thanks enough for all your support and subscribing to our channel. I appreciate all the likes and all the insightful questions and comments. I'm doing my best to answer them all. Keeping up with cryptocurrency is extremely hard. This industry is so rapidly changing and growing. It's always something new to learn, something new to mine almost every day. The way the LHR technology is growing, it's just becoming exponential and we're getting a lot higher hash rates. I'm really a crypto enthusiast. I love to do crypto mining. I am not a professional. By my job, I'm an IT pro, but I just love it. It really having this channel, I really appreciate being able to share my journey with you, share my knowledge, and together with your questions and your comments, I feel that we're able to grow this community. I look forward to what we're going to be doing today and in the future. Sure, we've covered other miners before with LHR technology, like our recent video on NB Miner. But what sets T-Rex apart from the other miners is that not only does it have new LHR technology that just came out this week, but it also has the ability to do overclocking built into the miner. That's right, we don't need to use MSI to do our overclocks. I can go right into the miner and I can say, this is my memory overclock, this is my power limit, etc. And the best feature is it even lets me specify my locked core clock value. And that's what I'm gonna be using today to lock the cores of these LHR cards, try to get my best numbers ever. I've prepared a sample batch file that I'm going to be using all throughout the tests in this video. This batch file will be displayed on the top portion of each window throughout the tests, and it will contain the necessary commands to start up the T-Rex miner, configure the stratum wallet, as well as the additional overclock and LHR settings I'm gonna be applying. In addition to that, you will see I will be displaying an MSI window beneath it. To demonstrate the power and advantage of using a locked core clock over standard overclocking, we're gonna show two samples. I've just set values in MSI afterburner, we just start up a miner, and right away you'll notice as the miner is starting, you'll see the GPU clock. You'll see a lot of variability in this number. 1905, 1980, 1770. There's a lot of fluctuation in this value. To me, there seems to be a lot of inefficiency as well. These, however, are the results of using a locked core clock. Notice the core clock is locked at 1350. It does not move. It's very constant and very consistent. And I think that gives us higher hash rate as well as an improved efficiency. We're gonna be using the same screen layout for the rest of the video. Up top, we're going to have a batch file containing the commands to start the T-Rex miner as well as pass the LHR tuning and overclocking values. Beneath that, we're going to have the MSI afterburner window open, but we're going to be using it for view only mode. I do not want to be sending or making any modifications and overclocking on the card while I'm doing it already in T-Rex. I could be sending conflicting values to the card causing potential damage. The left of that, I'm gonna be having my mining results. You're gonna be able to see firsthand all the mining results as they're coming in from the T-Rex miner. At the end of each graphic card test, I'm gonna be displaying a matrix showing the mining results as well as the overclocking used. If you wanna learn more about using the newest T-Rex miner, I'm gonna be making a separate video showing you in depth, step-by-step, -step, how to install and configure the miner to run in Windows, whether you're mining into a mining pool or even nice hash. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our upcoming video. So stick with me. I'm going to be testing five LHR cards using the newest T-Rex miner with locked core clock technology. And make sure you watch till the very end because I'm going to be showing you my comparison results of the latest T-Rex miner versus the latest NB miner. Let's get started. The first card I'm going to be testing today is the RTX 3060. This is the MSI Gaming X Trio. This card is big and it even takes two eight pins, which is very uncommon for a 3060. That must be to support the extra cooling. I got great numbers in my earlier test with the NB Miner. I can't wait to plug this in and see if T-Rex is up for the challenge. For my demonstration, I'm going to be connecting my standard desktop PC to an external GPU riser. For each individual card we're gonna test, I have a Hewlett Packard 1200 watt platinum power supply, which is very efficient, and we're gonna be using it connected to a Space Goats power meter. So we'll be able to see accurate at the wall numbers for each card we test.
Let's start mining Ethereum using T-Rex Miner on a locked core clock. Testing of the RTX 3060, the MSI card, have an LHR value of 75.4, I'm boosting the memory clock plus 1300, power limit 100, and a core clock is locked at 1575. The complete command parameters are up top. You see the command to start the miner and apply the overclocks. MSI, let me just refresh these values. See, I do have 1575's lock on the core clock, zero on the power limit, plus 1300 on the memory. 37.31 is the target hash rate. My first message is 37.29. I usually wait for a few messages to come in before I can even confirm that it's running okay. I think these numbers are dialed in pretty good. 37.17, 37.38. Oh, I think that's the best number I have for this car yet. 37.38 mega hash. I'm gonna keep let this run for a few more minutes to make sure everything's stable. I have a couple of accepted shares, but I'm happy with my numbers. 37.56, 37.15. These are my best numbers so far on this card. The power is anywhere between 105 to 107 watts on the miner. When I look inside of the T-Rex monitor, hash rates are showing 36.65, but longer duration is 37.23. This tool's got some cool things in it. Oh, look at it's even showing me 1574. It's showing me my locked core clock on my wattage. Now I have 115 watts is what it's showing me on power. Look at the meter, it's about 124.6. So we're in the high 120s for the power. And this is great results. 37.38. Wow, that's awesome. My final overclock results are a 37.2 mega hash average. And I'm getting it with about a 341 efficiency using locked core clock of 1575 and plus 1300 on the memory. The next card I'm going to be talking about is the Zotac. It's the RTX 3060 Ti, and normally the 3060 Ti is one of my favorite cards. But I'll be honest, although this card is beautiful, and I love its nice, white, shiny appearance, it's been pretty disappointing on trying to overclock it. I haven't been able to cross the 44 mega hash, even in my previous tests. But maybe today is the day. It will be an epic day that I'll be able to break the 45 mega hash boundary with this card. I have confidence in what I'm seeing so far, and I think lock core clock will be just the trick I need. Mining with the white Zotac RTX 3060 Ti with Hynix memory. My LHR value is 75.3. I'm using a plus 1025 on the memory clock and a 1380 megahertz on the locked core clock. And this combination seemed to be getting me the best results. Let me refresh MSI. See, I have 1380 is my locked core clock and plus 1025 is the memory. The complete command to do this to run the miner and configure the overclocks is in the white bar above. So let that be your reference. The target hash rate is 45.25. My first hash is coming in 46.01, but that's the first status message. And I don't usually believe the first one too much. Usually after the second or third, at least you start to see some pattern and you'll see a more reliable number. Okay, 45.20. That is my best number so far on this card. With this miner, I'm able to break that into the 45 range. So that's a big step forward I'm getting. At least 75% of the full hash rate of this card. Normally I'd be able to get about 60, but I'm getting 45.2. That's terrific. So I have a few accepted shares. My numbers are doing great. I'm running 45.46 to even 44.91 using an LHR efficiency again of 75.3. This locked core clock definitely seems running a lot better than when I was doing typical overclocking. I'm seeing my efficiencies are 345. My power is 133. But if I look at the wall, I have 158, 147. So, so overall, these results look really good. 45.64. That's like my best number so far. Um, my mining results are 45.1 mega hash is my average after doing a thorough test. I'm using 1380 megahertz is my locked core clock value with a plus 1025. I wish it wasn't high next memory so I could go a little higher and my efficiency overall is about 352 but I'm showing about 15 to 20 watts higher than two at the wall. 
The next card I'm gonna be testing is the EVGA. It's the RTX 3070 light hash rate card. This card has very high efficiency as I've seen in my earlier tests. I can't wait to get it plugged in and see how does it do with the locked core clock. Mining on the RTX 3070 LHR card, I'm using a memory clock offset of plus 1250 and a locked core clock of 1065 with a LHR value of 74.5. We're only reading values from MSI. I'm not doing any overclock within MSI. It's all done in the top command line that runs the miner and does the overclocks. First status message comes in 46.09. Definitely a great number. I've broken the 45 boundary that I seem to be limited to on the previous test with other LHR miners. And my efficiency though I'm noticing is 431. So that's a great number with only 112 watts. Okay, now it's, it seems to be calibrating and ramping up good. I just got 46.67 mega hash and I'm doing that on 113 watts of power. So I have an efficiency of 436. That is a beautiful number and this is definitely a step up on what I'm getting from my card. Wow, 47.18 mega hash on a RTX 3070 and light hash rate card. And I think it's all thanks to having been able to lock that core to 1065 on the miner. My temperature looks good. I wish I had a thermal temperature as well I'm able to get some great numbers and if I look to my efficiency is 430s if I look at the wall the wall is showing me 122 130 range so 122 to 130 watt range so we're getting about a high 120s if I look inside of the t-rex on the monitor now see I'm crossing back into 46.12 high 45s to 46 this is a great range the hourly and daily range is showing me 46.3 and 46.19 it's great numbers and great efficiency i'm really really happy with this and my results are 46.2 mega hash is my average with a locked core clock of 1065 and a plus 1250 on my memory and i'm seeing the core is it's very very stable and these numbers are great this is the best card that i've tested so far for efficiency running and getting over 75 percent of the hash power on a card and still getting a 430 efficiency the next card I'm going to be reviewing is the Founders Edition. It's the RTX 3070 Ti. This is another overachiever card. It has the GDDR6X memory and it has performance very similar to a 3080. I can't wait to start mining with this and see how it really performs with the locked core clock. We're mining with the RTX 3070 Ti, the Founders Edition card. I'm using an LHR value of 74.7, and I'm using a memory clock offset of plus 1300 megahertz. Power limit 100, but my core clock is down to 960 megahertz for a locked core clock. Let me just update MSI. You can see the 960 and plus 1300. Again, I don't do any of the memory overclocks in MSI. It's all done above in the command line where it runs the miner and sets the overclocks for us. So the target hash rate that the miner is saying is 60.38 my first status message is coming in at 61.2 but let's wait at least till we get another one before we can have some number we can be confident in 61.43 61.27 these numbers are incredible my temperature is 44 on the core 84 even peaking at 88 i'm running fans constant but i may have to adjust them these numbers are, are really really outrageous i'm using a 975 on my locked core clock 1300 on the memory just to see i'm breaking the 61 boundary consistent this is epic for me if i look at my power numbers i'm seeing on the minor showing me about 184 watts looking at the wall I have about 186 to 197. Okay, not too bad of an offset. These are outrageous numbers. I'm really, really happy. Let's look at the mining results. We are getting 60.6 is our average mega hash rate, 340 efficiency. And that's using a 975 megahertz on the locked core clock and a plus 1300 on the memory offset. last card I'm going to be reviewing is going to be the RTX 3080 Ti. This card really packs a punch with its GDDR6X memory. It's the most powerful of all the LHR cards. We are now mining with the RTX 3080 Ti graphic card. We're using an LHR value of 74, a memory overclock of 
plus 1300 and a lock core clock of 1350. Let me just update MSI. We have the 1350 locked core as well as the plus 1300 on the memory. We don't touch any of the overclocking within MSI since we're doing it up top. We're doing right in the command line as part of the T-Rex miner. Uh, according to T-Rex for this graphic card, our target hash rate for the unlocker says 89.93, but I have confidence we'll be able to get more. First status message in 91.6. That's looking better. I usually wait for a few messages to go by before I feel at least the number is realistic. This 1350, I think it's going to be better for optimization for performance as well as even for efficiency. Okay, so now we're seeing 90.41 mega hash and our temperature is at 49 on the core but 84 on the memory. So that's still pretty good because I'm only using 70% on the fans. You're only using 70% on the fans. I could go a little higher if I needed to. And our efficiency though is 362. So that's a definitely a good step forward from the previous miners I was testing. 91.84 mega hash and the efficiency is 367. That is incredible. We're breaking over the 90 mega hash boundary right now. I'm not pushing the card hard. My memory overclocks are only 1300. I know I could push them up to 1500, but I don't want to run the card that hard. 92.11 mega hash. Wow, 90.39, 90.91. These are epic numbers, and I'm all doing it with efficiencies in the 360 range. Look at that, 261 watts. When I look at the wall, 319, 320 range. So we're probably running around 310 watts overall. These are 92.05. These are great numbers. I'm super happy on this. And my overall mining results are 91.2 mega hash is my average hash rate. I'm getting it out with 363 efficiency, all with a 1350 locked core clock. 1300 is my memory clock. I've just completed testing five LHR cards using the latest T-Rex miner with its built-in overclocking and locked core clock technology. And the results were absolutely spectacular. I was able to achieve higher hash rates than I could ever get before. The 3060 V2 card coming in at 37.2 mega hash, the 3060 Ti at 45.1 mega hash, the 3070 light hash rate card at 46.4 mega hash with a 430 efficiency, the 3070 Ti 60.6 .6 mega hash, and the 3080 Ti 91, that's right, 91.2 mega hash. Epic! I broke the 90 mega hash boundary with this, and I have an efficiency still of 363. I didn't have to push the memory clock beyond the plus 1300 to get it. These numbers are fantastic. LHR the technology is evolving at an exponential rate. Now, how does it stack up against the other miners? Well, we've just covered NB Miner. Honestly, T-Rex Miner with the locked cork technology beat NB Miner in every single case for the hash rate, as well as even higher efficiencies across the board. The only edge that NB Miner had was on the 3060 card. It had a very slight amount of efficiency higher, but that came at a sacrifice of 1.2 mega hash. So again, in my opinion, still, T-Rex is number one with these hash rates right now. I was extremely impressed with these numbers that we've gotten today. We've been able to show that T-Rex Miner paired with that lock core clock technology really hit a home run for us. Once again, I'm an enthusiastic miner. I'm not a professional. So if you do overclocks, please do your research and do it at your own responsibility. I'm sharing my results and my overclock experience with you. I've really enjoyed this journey. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up, like smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Please put all your questions and comments down below. I'll do my best to respond to every one of them. Until next time, we'll see you on the next video. Happy mining.